Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your only host, BZ995 WCE Radio. Hey, up next, man, um, is my personal interview with K Reno. Now, a lot of my subscribers has put me on K Reno. Um, I done plenty of reactions with him, and I finally got an interview with him. So, from me to my supporters, I present to you the interview with K Reno on WC Radio. Let's get it. Dead faces in my pocket, nigga All I ever had was a rocket, nigga Domestic glass pot up on the stove Cook it up with bacon soda, let it roll Nobody gave me nothing, had to hustle my own Everybody know how they call my phone We speaking codes now, nigga, ain't no time for that Try to send me back to the How you doing? I'm been great, bro. I'm blessed, but how about yourself? I'm doing pretty good. That's what's up. Yep. So um I've been um well I got well, when I started this channel, I started it uh right after the quarantine shut down. So when I started doing this, you know, people put me on uh Texas music and then they brought your name up, uh K Reno, if I'm saying it the correct way. Right. 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 And uh yeah. And they say that, uh, so what part of Texas are you from? Give me a mommy. Oh, uh, man, I'm from Houston, man. Born and raised in Houston. And, uh, in a neighborhood called South Park. South Park. And, uh, been out here all my life, man. Okay. So, uh, how long have you been, uh, are you signed or are you independent? Yeah, independent, man. Been independent since day one. Um, yeah, um. I had my own label, I had a couple of labels, but my current label is a label I have called Black Book International that I've been had for about, since 2003. But prior to that, I had been uh, with a couple of, on a couple of independent labels with me and my dad and a couple other guys I had worked with back in the past. So I've been independent. I think I only signed one deal in my life and that was in the late 90s and that didn't go good. Okay. So uh, every, all, the rest of my career, I've been independent. All right. Um, uh, another thing also, like, uh, do you record yourself or do you work with engineers? Yeah, I work with engineers, man. Uh, I never got into the self-recording aspect of it. I wish I would have, and I'm and I may still do it at some point. But um, I like to I like to focus on just when I go to the studio. I like to focus on just dropping my vocals and just being an artist. That's and right. I don't really want to have to try to do that, record myself, and you know all those other aspects. I rather just concentrate on. Just dropping my vocals, man. But I do want to get into that at some point. Okay. Yeah, because I asked, I asked, I asked you that because uh, some of like your uh, your your serious uh records that you done, and I uh, I think it was like the dangerous one. Uh, I figure like you recorded yourself because it sounds because all your music sound like you take your time doing it on your time. You know. Well, yeah. Well, the, the the key to that is um, I got good patient engineers okay who, um, who they, they work with me through all of my uh my quirks okay and, um, eccentric behavior in the studio you know if, if it's something you know i'm a, I'm a perfectionist and I, I gotta get it the way that i hear it in my head it has a sound like that in my ears yes, and um, i got guys like my brother and um homie scout and a lot of guys that i work with over the years sniper who uh, they're patient with me so if i gotta do something 15 times <laughs> they cool with it, you know. They just let's do it again, do it again, you know. Right. Yeah, so that that's why you probably get that feel because they allow me to take my time and get it right. All right, yeah, that's good. So, um, how how long you been uh, independent, Farson? Man, I've been independent. Um, well, the first the first record I dropped was in nineteen eighty seven. I was still in high school. Okay, and um, from that point on. Other than, like I said, a, a brief stretch 
for, from about 97 to, to 98 sometime, about a year stretch. Um, but other than that, from the 35 years I've been in the business, I've been independent for 34 of them. 34? You know, okay. And, and, and even when I was with, the, with the, the label I signed with for that brief stretch, I was still independent. You know, I was still doing my thing because that wasn't a long-term deal. Um, all I ever known was, was uh, independent grind. That's how, that's how we came up. Um, in the beginning, we started, we tried to stop our records, the record labels, and all that, but we didn't have any success. Okay. We forced us to do it ourselves. Okay. All right. So, um, like, you got any uh, projects that's um, that's been previously out, like far as this year or last year? Yeah, man. We've been we've been we've been getting it on this year, man. I, um, my, my latest album, right here. Album called The Long Short Way. Yeah, that's the one um, I see right there. Collaboration with my homie Big Pup, and uh, this is out right now. And um, anybody wants to get it, they can go on all the digital sites, any digital um, platform you can think of has it. Or if you want the CD like I got in my hand, you can go to PUDEmpire.com, and then you can get the album. Now, um, as far as everything else, I dropped two books okay. during the pandemic. <laughs> this is my first book. It's called Life Lessons and Lyrics, yeah. and uh, this is basically like an autobiography. Just talk about my life and things that I've been through and doing music along the way. And my latest book was just dropped like a week ago. Okay, it's called Behind These Bars. I seen that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if we're talking about some rap bars, we're talking about the stories behind the lyrics. You know what made me write certain things and and um, breaking down certain songs and certain um, verses that I wrote. And uh, it's it's a good read for anybody who's a fan of lyricism, and uh, you don't have to be familiar with my music to get something out of it when you read that book. Yeah, well, yeah, cause um, I'm a, I'm gonna say this on my behalf. The reason why I became a fan of you because um, you know, a lot of my subscribers, my supporters, you know, they put me on to you, but I made it my business to like go because you got your own YouTube channel, so I made it my business to go search through your music and react to certain things yeah. that I did that, that I like. Wow. So. That's and you like one of those artists. I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with Snow the Product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, y'all like one of those artists that you know. When I started doing the YouTube thing, you know, I didn't know what kind of music I was gonna react to, but I I know I was gonna support the underground, the underrated, the up and coming. You know, because you know nobody nobody's doing that, so I figure I do it. So when uh when I heard I heard Snow first. And then I got put on you, and I was like, you know what? These are the kind of artists that I want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So that's what made me a big fan of you. And I appreciate yeah, you. Know, it's, it's a lot of artists, man. Like, um, and like I said, like with Snow, I, I first heard her when uh, I was at a, a Immortal Technique concert. Okay. And she was op she's one of the opening acts for Immortal Technique a few years back. Right. And I was like, hey, look at this girl. She, she killing, you know? And and you're right, you know, just it's, it's so many great under underrated and um, unknown, you know, independent artists. And, and a lot of times people complain about it's not enough good rap out no more. And I mean, there's plenty of it. You yeah, just have yeah, to yeah. do what you did and just dig and search and, and find it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, most of all, um, you know, you got your two books coming out and your album. Um, what's next for you, if you don't mind me asking? Man, actually, uh, <laughs> I'm getting ready to do two more albums. Okay. And, and, uh, if I if I if I stop being lazy and just get to work, um, I want to have two more projects out by at least uh, the middle middle part to the end part of March. Um, okay. But I just, I got to get on my grind. I got to get to work, you know, because um, I spent most of the uh, time in 2020 writing books. So I'm gonna get back to the music and um, and do my thing on that. So. Probably by March, April, somewhere around there, I have two brand new albums dropping. All right. That's good. So you do your own publishing and everything? Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. We we, we strive to be as um, free and independent as we can, man. Um, uh, being in the game, as long as I've been in it, I took a lot of hits, took a lot of lumps, and, and, and bumped my head a whole bunch of times and made mistakes and and gave other people control that they shouldn't have had. So, mm -hmm. you know, you grow from that and you learn that um, the best the best gift that an artist can have is not his or her talent, but the gift of ownership of their art. Yes, sir. Um, because that's what sustains you, you know, for the generations. And 
throughout history, you know, too many great artists and black artists in particular, man, have been robbed of their, their true value. And that is things like publishing and all and their masters. So okay. I try to stay on top of that the best I can. I'm still learning, but I try to, I try to stay on top yeah. of it. Yeah, that's the best part is to be hands-on, yep. Uh, yeah. And another thing, uh, like far as uh, art, other artists, have you uh, collaborated with? Yeah, man, I've been blessed, man. Um, I've been blessed to work with with a lot of a lot of great artists, man. Anybody in Houston, you probably can't miss me on anybody here. I work with guys like um, you know Scarface and Weezy mm-hmm. and the Ghetto Boy, Devin the Dude, um, Hawk and Screwed Up Click, DJ Screw, all those guys, man. You know, people we all came up in the game together. But um, you know, but I've also worked with um, guys like say like Immortal Technique and uh, Cannabis and. You know, a lot of great, great artists, man, that have, have, have just worldwide um, fame and recognition. And um, I'm grateful that, that they show love to me, <laughs> you know, yeah. because, they, you know, they're, they're some of the best to ever do it. So it's been a good journey for me, man. And, and, and the other people that I love to work with. But also, I don't put emphasis on the artists that are known as much as I put emphasis on all of them. I work with a lot of guys that you never heard of. Just mm-hmm. regular cats in the hood. You know, you real and, and, and you ready to work, we get down. Yeah. Down. yeah, okay. All right, yeah. Um, and another thing also, um, like, far as, like, how can people contact you if they're trying to work with you? Like, how's that? Yeah, how man, e- easy, easy. You just email me, um, SPC. K R I N O, that's my name, K R I N O, S P C K R I N O, at AOL.com, old school AOL. Mm, all right, and, yeah. um, you can email me and um, just for any inquiries, just hit me up. Uh, or, or you can catch me on, on my YouTube channel, which is The Real K Reno, and that's also my Twitter handle, The Real K Reno. Okay. Um, it's, it's not hard to reach me, man. Okay, yeah, because, uh, you know, I'm an artist myself. Mm. So, uh, I do. Um, I got my own distribution thing going on. That's what. This is what my radio station podcast is about. It's a uh, WC Radio. Uh, that's the uh, mass and everything like that. And this is yeah. This, yeah, yeah. So this is. Yeah. But oh, this 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 is uh. It's going to start off as a YouTube channel, but my whole thing is to get to the Shade Forty Five submit system for the Wi Fi, yeah. so right. I can actually have a radio station. So I started off as a YouTube channel. So it's like I'm not just reacting to underground music and not doing nothing with it. I want to put it on my own display so the people can hear it, you know. So, you know, I, it'd be an honor to have your blessing to actually spin your records, you know. Absolutely, man. I mean, yeah, man, and, and I wish the best on that, man. I mean, I, I, I like to see, you know, brothers with, with that innovative uh, spirit, you know, and just free thinking and independent, trying to build something, build a platform, themselves that that also benefit other people so yeah man absolutely get it popping you know like i give me them spins i got my publishing it's all up all right yeah yeah but that's the plan though but uh yeah and also um like uh far as like i don't know like a lot a lot of people do like how how do you like how do you pick your beats oh man it, it's, it's just it's just a matter of just just personal preference, man. I, I think that um, beats are like food. You know, there, there, are, there are many types of different different types of food, and and some people like things that other people dislike, mm-hmm. and some people can. It's like if if, if I see you eating mm-hmm. some beets, it's B E E T S, the red little beets. If I see you eating those, I might be like, man, how can you eat those? But you might love them because we have different tastes. Right. And it's the same with tracks, man. You know, I, I'm, I've always been a guy who, who I received a lot of criticism over, over the years because of my beat selection. But it's like, that's what I like to rap on. And back when I was producing a lot of stuff for myself, okay. um, I really got criticized. <laughs> it's like, man, they be like, man, let somebody else do your beats. But... I, I got the most out of the tracks I built and the tracks I picked because that's what I was feeling. Right. And I think any artist, um, it, when it comes to that, you're not going to maximize if you just, if, if I have to tell you, hey man, you should rap on this beat. Mm-hmm. But in your mind, it's, your heart is not in it. I'm not going to get the best out of it. So mm-hmm. you got to fit it before anybody. And a lot of tracks that may not appeal to people, they you can make them grow on people 
based on the passion you put into it with your delivery and your lyrics. I mean, that dude's spitting so hard, it made me like the beat. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it, it's a process, man. It's a process. Yeah, because I was listening to that, uh, what's the, uh, Only in the Hood? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't know how old that track is, but I like that one. But I was like, where did he get that beat from? You know, I even said I, it in the reaction, yeah. <laughs> I got a homie um, in Germany. His name is uh, Black Forest, and, and he did. And, and it is old. Um, that beat, he may have sent that track to me in 2010, probably 10, 11, over a decade ago. Uh -huh. And I sat on it probably for like five or six years before I actually used it. Uh -huh. Then when I then I wrote wrote the Only the Hood song, I was like, yeah, this 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 is a good beat for it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. You know, it's all about what you like, man. Some people like it, some people don't. Yeah, I, I like that one. That, that was the one that, uh, the supporters, the ones that had put me on there. Uh, it was a guy out of Dallas, Dallas, Texas, that uh, that put me on that song. And I was like, oh, you know, I, you know, I pulled it up. You know, how do I do my reactions is that, you know, when I when I search through my Google search, my Google search through my camera, you know, I, I type in the title of the song and the artist. And, right. and it'll pop up. And that's how, how, that's how the video just pop up and react. You know, right there. So it's like, yeah, I really got a laughter out of that when it was the lyrics. Was, <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's when I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try to get an interview. So you know, the, the best way to do things is that you gotta uh, you gotta take a risk. You know, some people you get you can get a thousand no's until you get a one yes. Come on. So it's like, on, so it's like that's you know, right, and and see a thousand a thousand mediocre no's will get lost in the greatness of one big yes that you get from somebody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Life is a numbers game, you know, so it's, it's a situation like, man, okay, man, it's like a dude at the club, you know, he done hollered at 25 girls and got <laughs> shot down, yeah. he might get that one, and she might have been the best one, yeah. so it's, it's a numbers game, man, you know, so yeah, you, you're absolutely right, man, it, it's, it's about just it's working it to the best of your ability, and, and the more you keep swinging and, and hitting that pinata sooner or later the candy gonna come out yes sir and uh it's been a pleasure talking to you um like you said you got new things in progress and everything like that far as that is concerned where can we find your books at because I, I i found that the one i seen that i seen that like somewhere online and i i purchased it already it should be coming pretty soon but the second uh, one, yeah. The, yeah, saying. both both my books can be found on SouthParkCoalition.net. That's South Park, like the cartoon. Yes, sir. Coalition.net. And, you know, everything goes through me. You know, so definitely, man, I appreciate the support from you, man. I appreciate the support from everybody, man. Y'all want to get, get, get a book and just, even like, see, even if you never heard of me, you don't know me, it's like, okay, you're going to get something out of reading these books because... The message is a universal, and um, if you're a writer and a fan of writing, even if you're not a rap writer, you may be. You may write scripts. You may write uh, uh, just stories or anything. Um, you're gonna get some out of them because these books break down the technique of writing. So mm -hmm. SouthParkCoalition.net, yeah, purchase the book and physical copies of my albums as well. Okay, most definitely, and it's been a pleasure and. Uh... You know, you be safe out here doing this uh this pandemic thing. And uh, uh thank you, man. You and, too. Uh, yep. How's the family? Everybody's good? Yes, sir, man. Everybody good. We stand out the way, man. We just it's a um it's a balance that you have to to, to, to operate on for for his living life, but staying out the way at the same time, man. Yes, sir. All right. You do that well, bro. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll be um, speaking to you in the future pretty soon. So, yes, sir. Anytime, bro. You got my information. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, peace. Peace. Catch religious. Dead faces in my pocket, nigga. All I ever had was a rocket, nigga. Domestic glass pot up on the stove. Cook it up with bacon soda, let it roll. Nobody gave me nothing, had to hustle my own. Everybody know how they call my phone. We speaking codes now, nigga, ain't no time for that. Try to send me back to the case, Jack. Well, I ain't trying to hear none of that fuck shit. I gotta get this money.